And we're going to get into something I did about uh, two years ago. And this, this is about uh, Roland is uh, off dedicating Boaz, which is good. Praise Yahweh for that. So let me get a little situated here. And in this, we're going to be looking at page one. And we're, I'm going to read from you from Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 6. And that is, when Yahweh your Elohim brings you into the land, which I should just hold on for a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to enter into prayer real fast. Abba Father, please help me to relax a little bit, and this is going to be all right. And I pray that everyone's ears are opened and eyes are opened, and they will receive your word and not mine. May none of these words be my words. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. And this is about giants. All right, so let's start again. This is about giants in the land, and they are all over because there were physical giants in the land in that time, and now there are spiritual giants all over the land. So I'm going to read from uh, verse 7, 1 through 6. When Yahweh, chapter 7, when Yahweh, your Elohim, brings you into the land which you go in to possess, he shall clear away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hewites, and the Yebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahweh, your Elohim, gives them over to you, you shall strike them and put them under the ban completely, make no covenant with them, and show them no favor. And do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughter to his son, and you do not take his daughter for your son. For he turns your sons away from following me to serve other mighty ones. And then the displeasure of Yahweh shall burn against you and promptly destroy you. And this is what, to, this is what you do to them. Break down their slaughter places and smash their pillars, cut down their asherim, and burn their carved images with fire. And you, for you are a set apart people to Yahweh, your Elohim. Yahweh, your Elohim, has chosen you to be a people for himself, a treasured possession among all peoples in the face of the earth. That is important because those are the enemies, and you know, need to know who they are because. Once you know who they are and how they conduct themselves, that allows you to make proper decisions in your life, and you can basically get rid of them. So next is 2016. Only the cities of these peoples, which Yahweh Elohim gives you as an inheritance, you do not keep alive any that it breathe, but you shall certainly put them under the ban, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, and the Hillite, and the Yebusite, as Yahweh your Elohim has commanded you. At least they teach you to do according to all their abominations which they have done for their mighty ones, and you sin against Yahweh your Elohim. Uh, this is kind of important. And you're wondering, well, you're commanded to actually to get rid of these giants in your life. They're all over, and I mean it, okay? And it's every bit as applicable today, that commandment right there, as it is now, and I'd say more so. Because the physical, the physical explains the spiritual. And you have physical giants, and then you have the spiritual giants. And they're one and the same. Because the, the root word of these, the names of these giants has a, an, an intrinsic nature of what they do and how they conduct themselves and their spirit is what they are, all right? And each of, this, each of these giants is a spirit. So we have the, the, the root of the Yebusite is hopelessness and the root of the Girgashite is rejection. The root of the Amorite is worthlessness and the root of the Hewite is defilement. The root of the Canaanite is shame. <clears throat> the root of the Perizzite is insecurity. And the Hittite is fear. And fear is, uh, yeah, he's going to get his own spanking at the end. All right? So I'm going to have to do this. So let's get into slide number two, the Yebusite. It's a Samic Wow Bet Yod, and it's a threshing place where hopes are dashed, the working hand in the house is constantly being twisted and turned and ground and pulverized, being stuck in a cycle that causes hopelessness. That's what the Yebusite does. It is hopelessness. All right, that's the spirit behind that particular giant. The Girgashite is rejection, and it's a Gimel Resh Gimel Sheen, and that's lifting up the head to move forward is destroyed 
in his SmackDown is rejected. I'm, I'm trying to get him. <laughs> I love it. I get blessed. <laughs> and the root of the Amorite is worthlessness. And that is an Aleph Mem Resh. It's the exalt, the self-exalted head speaks words that produce massive chaos and self-respect. And, and what they do is they are constantly boasting about themselves and they're constantly tearing down everyone else around them. All right? These guys, those, and those three particular giants, I just want to address. Um, these three giants, I think, are the Greek root causes they're the root causes for suicides. And in the last 18 months, suicides for not just kids, but adults as well as off the charts. But you won't hear that in any of the news, in any of the media. Okay? And, and I have to tell you, it, it's actually going to get worse. You know, things are going to continue to get worse. The birth pains are going to get closer and closer and closer. And we need to persevere. And we need to realize those three giants aren't worth it. And we shouldn't let them be basically punching us around. We need to tough it out. And we need to ask Yahweh to reveal himself to you if you've got issues. And especially for kids. Kids, bigger adults, little little ones as well. You need to be asking him to reveal himself to you because he's going to help get you through that and your parents. And you have to trust Yahweh and ask for his help. And for a personal example for me, um, I've had these three giants own me. I mean, they own me. I, uh, I was praying to Yahweh that he would kill me. Okay, many prayers like that. And... Then I learned the word, got the relationship, and it was amazing, and I had to do all that repentance. It's like, oh, wait a minute, stop! Don't kill me yet, no lightning bolt. All right? So, and I want to th single these three giants out in particular because these three we can kill today. There should be no hopelessness, there should be no rejection or worthlessness in this congregation or anywhere. And I mean that because the problem, the problem is you don't understand what Yahweh did for you. And this is what Charles Stanley does. And, and he says, Yahweh loves you this much. Okay? And that's important to know. And if you don't understand that, then you need to do the math. He sent his son to die for not just you, but for the countless myriads of Israel. Okay? That's important to know. You have value. You have tremendous value in the eyes of the Father. And you need to realize that, recognize that, and move forward in that. Because there's power in that. Okay? And just, those giants should just be done in everyone's life. And if they're owning you, then you need to be on your face. All right? Next is the Hewite in slide five. And that's the Chet Wow. It's a town, a place where one declares the words of another, take what's private and should be walled in, separate from another, conversations, joining it and spinning your words, basically you're having a bunch of gossip. Are you gossiping about so-and-so? Are you gossiping about Sally or Bob or Richter? All right. So we, uh, that's that particular giant. The Canaanite, shame. Life brought, it's a, it's a cough, noon, ayin, noon. It's life is brought low in humility and shame under submission, exposed for all to see. And I group these giants in a specific way, actually. The next would be the parasite in slide seven. Insecurity. It's a Zion Resh Pei. You have small villages without walls of protection open to the exalted head with the weapon. And why are these three giants important? Because I think these three giants are the, some of the root causes for the issues that people have in marriages between husbands and wives. And this is, if you see it, you need to own it and repent for it. Okay? And, it, they, and, if, and if these three giants aren't enough, they probably would invite the other three giants and, to help, you know, split the marriage up. And we need to be mindful of that. You almost need to take... 
and realize the situation that you're in, if that spirit is coming over you, you almost need to stop, step out of your body and look at the situation from a third person perspective to see what's really going on and then make a proper decision, okay? The next one really doesn't need much of an introduction after the last year and a half. That would be slide eight. And that would be the Hittites. And that would be fear. All you have to do is turn on the TV set and you're blasted with it 24-7. And it's all crap is what it is. Okay? It's the Het Tav and it's outside the covenant in, in the terrorist territory open to be terrorized in a place of fear. So this one needs to be to have its own little sermon on, if you will. <clears throat> fear only gives you a few facts and it wants you to make it gives you and points you to a certain decision that it wants you to make and expects you to make it okay so so Rick there's a monster that's gonna get you and I need you to go run and jump off this cliff and if you don't run jump off this cliff, this monster's going to come eat you up. It's safe when you jump off the cliff. Safe. It's safe. <laughs> All right? It's not safe. It, right, so you have to understand, it only gives you a small amount of facts, very small amount of facts, and they're not facts, they're all lies. And that's the important thing to realize. Well, again, what you need to know is if with spirit of fears coming over you, step outside the body, use your mind, critically think of what is going on, and make, and make a proper decision. Think about it. We're supposed to use critical thinking. Right? Isn't that important? <clears throat> so uh, then the question I have is, how many of us have owned that made decisions based on fear where it costs you money. Some of it, it might have cost us jobs. Some of it might have cost us relationships. There's a lot of things that fear does and that is really bad, and that's what it's designed to do, is to split you up, make you alone, and cut you off and to destroy you. Okay? So now... We need to dial in the fear factor a little bit. And I say that because there's certain fears out there that we all have, and we all kind of need to address them. And there's little ones like joblessness. You're afraid you're going to lose your job, or you're afraid to go to school, afraid to meet new people, afraid of snake bites or spider bites. <laughs> How about uh, afraid of speaking in public? Right? How about afraid of the dark? Now, how about, uh, how about fear du jour that's out there right now? You can find that on any YouTube channel. You can just flip on the news, any three-letter network, and you're going to get it. And, and these are the fears that are currently being projected out there. There's like fear of planet killer asteroids coming in. How about the fear of Planet X coming through the system and causing all types of havoc? How about the uh, fear of uh, forest fires? How about the fear of drought? How about fear of famine? How about fear of power outages? How about that? What about uh, this is one that's out there as well. Fear of uh, st storms so powerful that they will cause plasma bolts that will come down, crack the earth, the crust of the earth, and kill people within hundreds of miles of them. Okay? So, again, this is out there. There's even more out there. There's even more out there. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. And uh, this one, this one is very real as well. Um, how about afraid of somebody from the government showing up at your door and saying that they're here to help? <laughs> right? Isn't that a good one? 
And how about uh, the fear of volcanoes? And how about the uh, thousand foot tsunamis and the Pacific, you know, this, the land that we're on going tossed into the Pacific Ocean? There's that fear as well. You got to love it. And some people really get off on these fears. And they get wrapped around the axle on them and they think that they can spend their way out of that. Okay. How about earthquakes as well? Or what about the fear of uh, Antifa? How about that? How about they showed up your neighborhood? Or what about uh, government-sponsored disasters? Okay, that's a good one. How about more government-sponsored false flags to justify shredding the Constitution? Okay, I'm having kind of fun with this. It was fun to put the list together. It took me about five minutes. Okay. Um, how about uh, terrorism? But I repeat myself. And how about uh, Bigfoot and other monsters that are out there? You got the boogeyman out there as well. Now, uh, how about invasion of the U.S. by China? That's plausible, right? You have, uh, what about the total breakdown of society? Okay, again, we're looking at fears and we need to look at these things and get a handle on them, okay? Now, the last one I have, which obviously if it didn't make the list, I'd be tossed out, and that's the zombie apocalypse, okay? <laughs> so the question that I ask you, and this is my question for you all, now you don't have to answer it, and although I would like, uh, how about a head nod? Head nod either yay or nay. Uh, can you prep for this whole list? Okay, we have a lot of no's, a lot of no's. You have any? Okay, he's got one yes over here. Okay. You and another yes? Okay. All right. So we got kind of a mixed deal here. Now, I got to tell you something. The elites, the ones that are, well, behind all this mess, they are prepping. They have all the money. They have all the power. They have all the resources. And they have had hundreds of years to prepare. And what's going to happen to them? The word says, the word says that they're going to be ashes under our feet. Okay? So, and I'm not saying you shouldn't prepare. Okay? Um, so again, uh, they're, they're preparing in the physical. And in that physical is no life. So the question I'd ask again is, can you actually prep for this? And it should be, the answer is a yes. You can prepare for every single one of these things. Well, let me show you. This is how you do it. And I think this is the best way to do it. You get down, and you get down before the King of Kings, Melakam Melakim, and say, Abba, I've really blown this, and I need to make repentance in Teshuvah, and please forgive me for how I've screwed up. And you start there first. You have to start there first. If you're starting any other way, you've got it backwards. You've got the donkey behind the cart. And that ass isn't going to save you this time. Okay? So, you need to repent first, and then you need to be listening to the Ruach HaKadosh, that set-apart spirit of Yahweh, and walking in that spirit, because if you're walking in that spirit, you're going to go help who he wants you to help, and lift up who he wants you to lift up. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Shining the light of Yeshua, walking in the way. It's about repentance. Because when you do that, you have faith. And faith drives out fear. Fear needs to be shortened by a head, and its carcass needs to be tossed in the wilderness. Because it's gone through, this congregation has gone all over the world, and it needs to be called out for what it is. And you need to recognize it for what it is. Okay? Uh, let's see here. 
All right. And it's, so let's get into Revelation 21.8. And if you get into that, you're going to realize that there's a, there, that that's an exclusionary list because we have a list of exclusions. Yahweh has a list of exclusions on his proposal as well. And that is, that was a Ben joke. <laughs> And then Yahweh's list of exclusions at the top of the list is cowards. Cowards don't make the kingdom. They do not make it. Yeah, you have to overcome the fear. You have to have faith and walk it out. Okay? So if we read Deuteronomy 20, basically 17 and 18 on the next slide, there we go. And if you put it in the context of the spirits and what they are, it says you will utterly destroy them. Fear, terror, worthlessness, and the shame, and insecurity, and the defilement, and hopelessness, as Yahweh or Elohim has commanded you, so that they may not teach you to do according to all their filthy deeds which they have done to their mighty ones, and that you would sin against Yahweh or Elohim. You need to get rid of these spirits. And I know some of us have owned it, and they have just gone in and just destroyed lives, and destroyed relationships, and destroyed these other things, and we need to be walking in shalom. I mean, mean? Hmm. And uh, I got just, just a few more things. Just a few. Hmm. Hmm. And that is this. You know, I've studied the Word, and I've seen... I've seen the promised land. You've seen it when you walk it, and you see it, and when you walk it in the Spirit. And you know it exists, and you know it's flowing with milk and honey. And... We can do this. We can kill these giants and go into the land. And we need to be doing this. All right? Amen? And this is what I say, this is what I say to B'nai, Yahweh, Tseva, Oat, and all those who have a year to hear. That would be Kazak, Hazak, Benit, Hezek. Be strong, be strong, and be strengthened. Because this is a battle we need to engage in right now, and we need to address it. Oh, Abba, I thank and praise you. This has been uh, growth, hopefully not just for me, but for so many others. And may their eyes be opened, and ears hear, and may they have a heart to obey. And may they lay waste to the adversary. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen.